Hello and welcome back to our Portugal renovation project where we are moving on with the build today. We've got our subfloor down in two thirds of the ground floor, which we're in the process of converting. We have one more third of the building to lay a floor in. You may just be able to see some of it down here. In order to get that floor down, which we won't be doing in this video, but in a future one, we need to lay some more pipe. And the majority of this pipe is gonna be gray water. So this is also really the beginning of our gray water harvesting project. We've got a few things to show you relating to that. We've got a few pipes to lay, but actually the first thing that we need to do is dig up part of this floor that we recently finished laying to fix a mistake that we made. Previously on Make Do Grow, There's loads of the head down there too, which is good. I mean, I can see through here all the way to the hole in the other wall. And just in terms of this grey pipe, unfortunately we do have joins in it. So we are going to PVC glue them rather than use rubber seals and use as much glue as I can get into the hole. I don't want leaks in the floor. No, I understand that. After knocking some holes through the wall and laying some grey water pipe, we laid the first two layers of our lime creek floor, concealing the pipe beneath a solid lime and lecker slab under a layer of geotextile. But then we realised there was a problem. There were many comments about things, some useful, some not. But someone did point me in the direction of why seals and the research behind them. So I went to do some more research about the research to learn that actually the seals are the correct thing to do, not to use PVC cement in a subfloor. It may never leak, but there's always that feeling. And funnily, when I read the comments, I got that sick feeling in my stomach where you know, yeah, they're right, there's something wasn't right when we did it. So we are going to undo and redo as we do, you know, bring you along for the ride. Let's get going. That's Ripping it. up a floor. <laughs> Does it fill you with joy? It fills me with joy to correct a mistake so that I don't worry that we haven't done it right. It's just not for me to enjoy to have to <laughs> pull up our hard work but that's how it goes what else do we need uh we need a big machine yeah. kind of interesting look at how hard that is like in the sub layer oh yeah it is like a concrete floor it's just uh, huh it's kind of crazy isn't it I mean, well these are very much looking like you know Maltesers. Yeah. Or chocolate crackles as someone says to me. <laughs> um, I guess there is uh, not many people who make a video about laying a lime creek floor and also breaking it up to show you what it looks like yeah. kind of underneath. It's very interesting. It's kind of fascinating stuff. Oh, look at that. Found the join right here. Yeah, that's where I thought it was. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you'd be free to work without any more of this stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, right, okay. Nice. Go I'll go get that out. out. Oh, that's good. I need to go and assist. Yeah, okay, I can receive. So let me explain why well, we've gone to all the hassle of taking this out and replacing it. So it's not about the rubber seal versus PVC cement. It's about the type of pipe that we're using. And the type of pipe that we're using has this section here, which is where a rubber seal sits into. You can use PVC cement theoretically, 
but the the lip here is the only part that has a really solid contact when it gets to this part it's a little bit not in contact which is to allow the pipes to move and expand and bend a little bit so you only get maybe a centimeter maybe so i thought it was less than that actually i thought it was more like five mil but it's a centimeter whereas pipes that are designed for pvc cement have this whole section where you put the cement and then the, the contact between the two pipes is that much and that creates a really good seal it almost like uh it almost fuses the pipes. yeah together. it melts the, the cement melts the pipes and kind of fuses them into one but with only a centimeter there's so much risk that there's a portion there where the seal isn't good and even though we've pulled this out we obviously can't 100 percent tell it looks like it's probably sealed really well but i would forever be worrying yeah so the short version of this story is these pipes are designed to have the rubber seals with them rather than pvc cement we thought that our friendly portuguese plumber friend was saying cement is better in retrospect what i think he was saying is use the seal and cement that's better so it's like doubly being doubly safe but actually the seal is perfectly suitable for this and we don't need the addition of the cement. So these are designed for like a male and a female, right? So this is the female bit and the male bit slots into it. I'm sure you know how that all goes. <laughs> but there are cases where you maybe need to cut a pipe halfway through and you don't have a male piece and a female piece. Sometimes what they do is they heat that up and they push them together. And that is a good candidate for using the cement because there is no seal to be put into the mix. Anyway, it's a very long-winded way of saying we're fixing this problem that may not have been a problem, but we will feel much better having done it this way because this is how these things are designed to work. Okay, you want to talk to me about some of our grey water pipe here? <laughs> Maybe we should start with what we mean by grey water, in case anyone's not familiar with the term. Sure, that's an easy one. So grey water is anything except what you flush down the toilet, in my mind, because toilet is black water. So into our grey water system, we have chosen to connect the kitchen. So that means the kitchen sink, the dishwasher, the laundry, so the laundry sink and the washing machine, and then anything that comes out of the upstairs bathroom, which will be a bath, a shower, a sink. Uh, and then downstairs we will have a sink and a toilet, so we will connect the sink as well. So we have done a dry fit and we've got to the point where we need to go and actually connect them with the seals before we cut the very last piece so that we get the positioning correct. So if you remember from previously, we have you can follow me just I'll into the cry. doorway. It's very dark in here, but yes. Uh, we had the pipe coming out of the stone wall. That's the one that we had to replace. And that's going into, so that's a 40 mil pipe. The verti vertical piece there is also a 40 mil pipe, which will go to a sink unit. And it's going to have a little, the, the second part of the Y there is an access point. So if we ever need to stick something down, if there is a blockage, we can. At that point where they kind of come together, it goes into 50. 50 millimeter 50 pipe. 50 millimeter pipe. That runs all the way across the floor here. And then it's going to have the downstairs basin joined into it. So the basin will be in 40 mil to join into the 50. Upstairs through this wall. Where the hole is. Will be the wastewater pipe from the bathroom upstairs. And that will come down here and again, will join into this large pipe, the 50 mil pipe, that's going out of the building. And then outside of the building. We have some magic. We have some more magic going on. And we'll um, show you that later. Yeah, we have some specialist parts that we bought to help us with that. Let's let's get this stuck together and then we'll kind of wrap things up with the, the fancy bit. The stuff outside, yeah. Okay, let's put some rings in. We've upgraded our lube. <laughs> Working on your finger, rub it around a bit. Lube me up. Can I spin you? 
Now the nice thing about all this is that we can stick it together and then we can kind of massage it into place yeah. as needed later on. These are much easier to work with than the 110 pipes. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, yeah. So we were making good progress with the pipe laying. Unfortunately, one of the parts that I bought this morning uh, had a small defect in it, which meant that the the rubber ring or the seal or the anilia, if you are speaking Portuguese, uh, didn't fit properly, so the pipes didn't go together properly. Fortunately, I was able to exchange that, no problem, and no questions asked, which is good. So we should have this done shortly, and then we can show you the outside stuff, which I think is infinitely more interesting. So a few weeks ago, we got out the digging tools again to prepare this area outside the house for some specialist parts for our grey water harvesting system. But because we know how much people enjoy watching the sight of others doing manual labour, we thought we'd show you a bit of the digging process. Okay, welcome to the outside where we can show you something which is a little bit more related to this idea of grey water harvesting. Because water is such a scarce resource here in Portugal, we want to harvest as much of it as we can. We've got rainwater harvesting from our gutters and our downpipes. This PVC solution is temporary, but it's at least catching the water from the roof. It's not going anywhere yet, but it will do eventually. Um, but grey water, so all that stuff that Kylie mentioned before, sinks, baths, showers, etc. We want to capture all of that and filter it. And we'll talk about the filtering in a second because there may be something that we need your help with. But out here, outside the building, is where a very important thing happens. This is the place where we control where the water goes. Does it go off to our wonderful grey water filtration system or do we divert it into the septic tank, which is technically not a septic tank, it's a cesspit. It's a completely enclosed system, but it is where we're going to divert the grey water to temporarily. So Kylie's going to explain how it works. This is the existing soil pipe that goes to our septic tank, cesspit, whatever you want to call it. This goes down to our septic tank and there is no access into our septic tank if there was ever a problem. And so I wanted to be sure that we could have some access, but I also wanted to be sure that if there was a lot of rain uh, or some other is issue that it didn't back up into the house. So we've installed what is called a no return valve here, which will mean that the water can go this way, but it can't come back up. There's a stop flap here that will only open that direction and the water, if it were to back up, would actually push against it. And this is also a lock, so if there was a heavy rain pour that we were worried or if we noticed an issue, we can actually set this to on, which is weird, but it puts the gate... It locks it in place. Into late in, yeah, exactly. And I've done the same thing on the grey water. I was originally worried that we would have a backup from here, the septic, and then it could get up into the grey. But now we've got, it's like double protection, but it also means if ever there was a blockage somewhere down the grey water run, that it wouldn't back up and go back into the house. So the grey water comes down, goes through this no return valve, and then we have a diverter here. So in normal operation, when we're using the house and using the sinks and using baths and showers, the water will just go in a straight line and it will go down to wherever we're doing our filtration. In the event of maintenance or in the event where we don't have a filtration system like now, um, we can divert that water so it will come down and it will be diverted into the, the black water line or the septic line or the wastewater. The, gray of black, the black water. The black water. And this 
no return valve has the same thing you can push this up into a locked position and that uh, permanently locks that up and these uh, no return valves also work as inspection chambers and we're going to build a like a small brick wall and put a hatch on top that will usually be down and it will blend in nicely with the the calzadas, the paving, the, the landscaping that we do out here eventually, so that we've always got the ability to get in here, access and uh, clean things out if we need to. So this is the lid that has come off of this one and this is obviously the lid off of this one. And so this is the, the no return valve. So in normal operation, water comes down here and it tips up and then it flows through. If there was a blockage, the water comes up and it can't blocks. go anywhere and similarly if there was any bugs rodents anything trying to get up here just in normal operation it's shut like this so it would be very difficult so it's full rodent protection as well insect or anything and the same thing here right yeah let's get a shot of that Ugh, it smells it does smell a little bit because this is operational so yeah same thing locked into place typically and it flushes comes up and then it closes back one jug of water, which I'm just going to put down one of the uprights and then it's going to be obvious that the water flows through the pipe. Okay, so this arrow points towards the closed position, which means that we are not sending grey water down to be filtered. We are diverting it into our black water pipe. So, so there we go. You see it come through. Very nice. And then... It comes out here. Brilliant. <laughs> so now I'll depress to open and I'll turn this around, close it off here. Yeah, so now nothing should be going that way. It should all be coming straight through and we should see a puddle of water at the end of the pipe. Go. Success! Nice! So we do want to do one more test after many of the comments which is to fill all the pipes and make sure that none of the joints have leaked but as usual we're missing a part. Well we had the part but it was faulty, faulty a second faulty part so... so we have to get it replaced. Okay so once we've got all of this finished and in place down here a little bit further away through this Oh, small jungle of weeds from some of the land clearing we did here. Oh, that sun's very bright. Let's go this way. So this whole area here, which used to be even more overgrown than it is now, is going to be the location of our filtration system. We're going to be filtering the grey water. There's a few different ways it can be done through gravel pits, through reed beds uh, and a couple of other things that escape me at the moment. We don't have all of the details decided or chosen or ironed out for this but we do know that it's very important to make sure we filter this water properly and correctly and safely it is not going to be for drinking it is going to be for irrigating all of the crops and the garden over here behind me but we still want to make sure that it is good clean safe water there will be a few different components to it and there is a complication of the levels the land does flow nicely downhill here, which is great, but we're probably going to be collecting the, uh, the grey water after a grease trap in a kind of like a holding tank, not too far away from the bottom of where the pipe run is currently. And so we'll probably need to have some pumps to pump the water through the system. Those will be solar pumps and we'll deal with all of that separately. But we still have a lot to decide and plan on the exact implementation of the filtering. And so if you've done something like this before, we would love to hear from you to get your thoughts and input and um, experiences of doing that. Or if you've just seen some resources, some other YouTube videos or some websites or something that might be helpful for us, please do let us know. We'd be very appreciative of that kind of assistance. And of course, when we work out all the details and get ready to actually implement it, we will show you how we do the whole thing. So this is very much part one, it almost feels like part zero of grey water harvesting, but it's a very important part, this diversion of being able to control where the water goes. And there'll be lots more interesting stuff relating to this to come in due course.
along with the rainwater harvesting as well, which will kind of end up being treated in a similar kind of way, similar but different. So I think that is a good place to wrap this up for now. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.